pretty much everyone knows what this is. This is Haribaka. And why are these products better than this? Okay, so pretty much everyone knows what this is. This is Haribaka. There's different versions of this. There's uh, Duroc, there's Wonderboard, and Haribaka, uh, Utilicrete, and they're all cementitious backer, backer boards. This one actually, in fact, is a fiber cement board. Cement board, um, Duroc, uh, Wonderboard are actual cement boards. Um, so, a lot of people are using this to install for the underlayment for the tile. So why are these products we've got Flexbone, we've got Ditra, this is Ardex Flexbone, we got Schluter Ditra, and we got Mapei Mappy Guard UM. So these three, one, two, three, are very similar products. And then there are other ones uh, which I don't have here, but I've used in the past, like Laticrete Stratomat. And uh, there's a few other ones. But they're all basically the same thing. They all do the same thing. And why are these products better than this? So when you install a backer board, like Hardy Backer or Duroc. You have to follow the manufacturer's recommendations. And the same, same for these products here. You still have to follow uh, manufacturer recommendations and you also have to make sure that your floor can support a tile, um, you know, a, a porcelain tile or ceramic tile or marble tile, whatever it is you're gonna install. And I have a video about that and I'll link to that in the description. Uh, it's about deflection of the floor and what it needs to be so that you can install your tile floor. The underlayment is the product that you put on top of your, on, now we're talking about plywood subfloors here, although these these three products can also, and an uncoupling membranes can also be installed on concrete floors and they're actually, if you're doing a concrete floor, I would probably say that you're better off using this than going directly over the, over the concrete, but that's a discussion for another video. Today, I want to talk about plywood subfloors. So, when you install this, you're gonna install a leveling bed of thin set mortar. There's a lot of guys on YouTube that say you don't have to do that. What you want to do is follow a manufacturer's recommendation. If you want it to, to perform the way it's designed to, to perform, then follow the recommendations that the manufacturers set out. Every one of them, without exception, will tell you you have to cement it, you have to use a leveling bed of thin set mortar under the backer board. And the reason for that is is because when you if you just nail this down, you're you're leaving voids under the under the backer board. And it's not completely supported. This needs to be completely supported. So if you're just screwing it down, no matter how many nails you you, you you're putting down, it is not completely supported. Just take my word for it. And don't take my word for it. Take the manufacturer's word for it. So you have to install this with a thin set mortar. And you're going to use a proper one uh, over the plywood. So this, obviously, this is a quarter inch thick. They make the half inch version. Um, doesn't matter whether you use a half inch or the quarter inch. Backer boards like this have no structural value. They are not going to stiffen up your floor. It might seem that they do, but they add no structural strength to your subfloor. Neither do these products. Well, there's one in particular that that you could use, but I'm not talking about that here. The, none of these are to add structural strength to your floor. The floor has to meet proper deflection before you can install your floor. And as I said, I'll link to that uh, video in the, uh, in the description below. So, you're installing your backer board. The backer board is a rigid surface. It does not flex. These are all very flexible. When you cement this to your floor 
and you add your screws or your roofing nails, whatever it is you use to attach the floor to the substrate. And what happens with this is it all becomes one unit. It all becomes bonded together. So whatever movement is under the floor is gonna transfer through the mortar, through the, through the, the board, and up through the tile. So if you have lateral movement in the floor, that movement is gonna transfer through to the tile. This is a assembly that will transfer all the forces through the entire assembly of the floor. So, what's the difference between this and this? So besides the obvious fact that these, this is rigid, these are flexible. This will not protect you from the small movements that are under the floor. Now don't get me wrong, I've installed thousands upon thousands upon thousands of square feet of this product over the years. And this stuff has been around, like the Ditra, this, the Ditra, the Schluter Ditra, the orange one, is the original uh, uncoupling membrane that Schluter invented. And then now uh, all the other manufacturers, Ardex, Mapei, Laticrete, and all the other ones, all, uh, even Custom has, has an uncoupling membrane. They all have uncoupling membranes. And the benefits of this, as opposed to this, are substantial. Like I said, this does not protect from movement of the subfloor. These will. So what happens? <clears throat> so like I said, you install this with a with a cement uh, with a thin set mortar, and then you put use a thin set mortar on top to install the tile. The tile is bonded to the board, the board is bonded to the subfloor. How do you install these? These, and these, these ones here are only an eighth of an inch thick. If you look at these, I, uh, I'll bring, I'll show you in a minute. These are, these are only an eighth of an inch thick. So besides, besides the height differential and the weight difference, you carry if you've got like a hundred square feet of this to do, you got a you got a lot of weight that you got to carry into the into the into the room. A lot of weight that you have to move around, and a lot of weight that you're adding to the floor. These ones here are very light. You can bring a hole, like you can get the, the Ditra, for example, comes in a 340 foot roll. You can put carry 340 feet of Ditra up the stairs into the room on your shoulder, no problem. Try and carry 340 square feet of this into a room all at once. I'm not gonna do it. Okay, so let's go a little bit into the past, a little history on how these methods developed. <clears throat> so years ago, uh, like you'll hear a lot of people, that the only way to, flo to, to do a floor is to float a floor. And I've, I've floated plenty of floors. And that is actually a great method, but the problem with that is very labor intensive, it's very heavy, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort. And even those, even if you've got a, if you, if you're doing a, a, a mud floor over a plywood subfloor, what do you do? You put down tar paper, wire, wire lath, and then you put an inch, an inch and a quarter. Sometimes you can do less of uh, deck mud, which is sand and cement, and you screed that out to be flat. Gives you a perfect surface every time, but it's very heavy and very labor intensive. But the key thing to remember here is the tar paper you put down. The tar paper you put down acts as a slip sheet so that the mud is not directly bonded to the plywood subfloor. So in other words, it uncouples the floor from the plywood. Go back even further into historical times when they built, the, um, built all these cathedrals and stuff. They used to use a sand strata method. What's that? So what they did, what they used to do back then, and in some places it's still used. Uh, I actually read about it. There's a place, I don't remember exactly where they, where they still use this system, where you put a layer of sand 
and then they build them water based on top of that and then they put the tile there and what does the, sa the sand do? The sand uncouples the floor, the, you know, the, 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 the mortar base from the structure below. It uncouples. So what, has, what have all these done? When Dietra uh, invented, when Schluten invented the uncoupling membrane, what did they do? They, they condensed all that um, history and all that, that method into a, into a tiny little sliver, an eighth of an inch thick. So you still have your floor uncoupled like in ancient times and even more modern times where they use well, you know, and we still use those a lot of times. I, I actually will always still pretty much do my shower floors um, in mud. So they condense that into an eighth of an inch where you get the, the, the principles that they used to have for uncoupling the floor from the, uh, the, the, the tile floor from the structure. So that's just one benefit, uncoupling a membrane. This here bonds everything together. So what are the other benefits? Well, it's plastic. Well, in the case of Stratomat, they have holes in it. So in that case, it's not really valid. But in, in the rest of these cases, these are all, all uh, plastic type material. So everywhere you install this besides the seams is completely waterproof. If you want to proof the entire floor, you just apply a banding of some kind over the seams and, and you made a completely waterproof floor. Uh, I've shown this in se several times in several videos. So what else does this do? So if you can create a waterproof floor, you've uncoupled your um, your floor, your tile from the floor below. So if the plywood moves and shifts as it will, because it's a wood structure, that movement will not be transferred through to the tile. And it also has, if you're on a concrete floor, there's also vapor management. Because of the empty, empty space, if there's like moisture in the concrete or coming from below, it can disperse in the empty voids of of the Dietra. So, or, or the flex bone or the stratomat. So how does this achieve the bonding of the membrane to the floor? Well, the, as you can see, they all have a fleece on the back. They all have a fleece on the back. So you, you know, I have many videos showing how to install this and how it works. I just want to make a comparison between this and, and, and the back of board. So the fleece is attached to the floor. But when you attach that fleece to the floor, all the voids in, in between the membrane do not get attached. So you have empty space between all these indentations. And that allows the membrane to the form. It allows for, for vapor equalization under the mat. These fleeces are heat welded to the membrane, so they're not going to come loose. You, you know, it takes, takes a bit of an effort to, to peel these off. It's pretty, stuck on there pretty good. It takes, it takes quite an effort to peel these off. So the voids in the, in the membrane allow it to deform and not transfer the movement through to the tile. Uh, Schluter actually has a pretty good video showing how, how this works. I might link to that in the description so you can see. And all these other products, they all work the same way. A cement board is mechanically fastened to the subfloor. It is adhered to the subfloor via the thin set, so it's all one. No allowance for movement of the subfloor through the board through to the tile. This was great when it first came out, and I, like I said, I've installed 
thousands upon thousands of square feet of this. Ditra, I think, came out with this. Uh, Schluter came out with a, a version of the Ditra, I think in 19... I don't remember exactly. I'll look it up and, and, and I'll put a, put a date in the video as I'm, I'm saying this. I don't remember exactly, but it's been around for, for over 25 years. So this is not a new product. It's just taken a long time for people to adapt. Okay, so this is the Ditra. Very thin, like an eighth of an inch. This is the flex phone. Same thing. And this is the Mappy Guard UM. About the same. They're all about the same, about an eighth of an inch thick. You can get different versions of these, which uh, are thicker, like the Ditra has the Ditra XL. Uh, Stratomat has, has, has a thicker version. <clears throat> and they all work the same way. So the thing that they have in common is they all have a method to mechanically attach the tile to the membrane without actually bonding to the material. So if you look at, at the Ditra here, I don't know if you can see it, it has like a dovetail. It's kind of hard to see. It has, has like a dovetail so that the mortar will fill these, these voids and will be locked into the membrane without actually sticking to it. Same with the, the uh, Artex Flex Bone. It has a method of attaching the tile to the surface without bonding to it. And the same with this. This takes a different approach. Instead of having a reverse or a cutback or a dovetail type, they have a mesh on top which holds the tile to the membrane. But they all have empty spaces. Empty spaces. It's hard to see with the... They all have empty spaces between between the parts of the mortar that go down to the bottom and fill the pattern on, on the membrane. Okay. So if you're a DIYer, this option is probably going to be cheaper for you because it's, it's cheaper to buy this than it is to buy this. But the benefits of this far outweigh the extra extra cost. If you're a, a professional installer, if you're a if you're a tile guy that installs tile all the time, and you're not using this, the cost difference between this and this is 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 really irrelevant. Sure, it's going to be cheaper to buy this, but it's got a lot, going to be a lot more labor intensive to install this. Where this, if you've got if you've got a thousand square foot of this to install, it's going to take you two or three days. You're not going to do it in a day. If you've got a thousand square feet to install this, one guy can install a thousand square feet of this, provided it's a wide open area, in four hours, five hours. You're gonna get done really quick installing this. The amount of thin set that you use to install this over this, sure, you've got the waffles on top of this, but you use a very small trowel to install it on the floor. With this here, you gotta use a quarter inch square notch trowel and then whatever this, whatever trowel you got you gotta to use to install your tile, depending on the size of the tiles. So the amount of thin set you're gonna use between one and the other is gonna be about the same. So there's no savings there. The benefits of this over this are, are enormous. So if this is your first time seeing my videos, uh, my name is Sal de Blasi, tile contractor in the Boston area for over 35 years, been installing tile a long time. And if you check out my channel, you're gonna find all kinds of videos on how to install tile the correct way. I see a lot of guys on YouTube that handyman 
um, so-called tile contractors that tell you how to do stuff but they're not following the proper standards and methods. You need to follow TCNA guidelines, manufacturer's recommendations. If you, if you follow the proper methods and standards, it'll work every time. If you need to know something about tile or how to install it, check my channel out. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Check me out on Patreon if you can. If you can support me, that'd be great. And also, don't forget to subscribe. I will leave links in the description below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.